I didn't have the thermostat when I changed out the water pump. So I'm putting the thermostat in now. I assumed the water pump would have a thermostat, but I was wrong. The new one is uh, Subaru. It's the part number. And I looked at it in the light. The uh, markings on the new thermostat are identical to the old one. Just everything is the same. It came with a seal, so I'm just going to put it in place. I see that the little, uh, I don't know if that's a pressure relief valve or an, a way for air, air to get out of the system, but there's that little uh, doohickey right there, and it's, let's see, it is pointing up, so I'm going to just mimic the old one. It, I didn't have any heating problems or anything, so... I don't think I can go wrong if I just do it the way it was done originally. It feels good. It feels like it'll stay right there for me. I'm getting excited because I get to do the timing belt next. I've got some of the new parts in place already. Still need to torque them down. There, I'm at resistance there. I'm at resistance there and I'll just go a little more. Little 10 millimeter bolts. Actually the shaft on these bolts is probably only about six millimeters. They have a 10 millimeter head. So it'd be easy to break one. There. Now I can move on to my timing belt. I noticed a steel pin embedded in the housing here for the uh, top of the hydraulic plunger, hydraulic piston rather, to ride against. That gives it something to push against. And when the grenade pin is pulled, that sends this down against the belt. I went to the uh, extra expense of a belt tensioner that has Japan stamped right there. Here it has NTN41. The research that I did indicates that's the belt tensioner that I want in my motor. And I'm pleased with all the other pulleys that came with it. This, this feels like a good stable pulley on the water pump. This one feels good. They're double bearinged. This one's got a good double bearing. They feel very solid. The one that I'm the most concerned about is the one that goes down here. You can see that there's a void in the uh, sleeves of the idler, both inside and out, because there's just one bearing in here. That doesn't look like a good design to me. I'm not any kind of a Subaru expert, but that looks flimsy. I see this single bearing idler as the weak link in this timing belt assembly. I wouldn't be surprised if this wobbles and sets up a wobble in the whole system. But it's the best that I could find. It's manufactured in Japan and it's the, the uh, OEM equipment. I'm not pleased with it, but I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and run it because it's the best I can do. Now, I, I've seen some uh, Subaru mechanics on 
YouTube that are running this pulley instead of that one here and the uh, rationale for that is that this has the double bearing but it doesn't have the shoulder on the inside like this one does and there's shoulders there's a shoulder here on the crankshaft pulley this camshaft pulley has a shoulder on both sides of it for some reason this one just has the shoulder on the inside of it not uh, rather the outside of it and not the inside and that's what I figure this one's for is to keep the belt from walking uh, in towards the engine but uh, like I say there, some mechanics are running this instead of this because it's got the double bearing and they're not having any trouble with it and I debated that I almost went with this pulley instead of that one but what convinced me not to was the distance that the belt has to travel from this inside shoulder back to let's see if that wasn't there there wouldn't be another inside shoulder until it got to this pulley so that's a long run and I, I worry about the belt, you know, finding its way in towards the motor. And there's not much clearance, for example, right here. I worry about the belt rubbing up there. And I'm not happy with it. Uh, it's another uh, Subaru design that I don't like. I'll go ahead and tighten this a little and see if I can appreciate any wobble here got my improvised wobble tester in place Let's see if I can move this oh yeah the wobbles all over I can see it from way back here I can feel it this is brand new never run uh, OEM equipment this is Subaru's single bearing idler that's just uh, that's just no good I don't know what to do now I'm uh, I'm more tempted now to run this idler here buy another one of these and put it right here and take my chances of the belt walking towards the engine a little or I could just run this until it wears out or it gets noisy um, of course when this is wobbling that wobble is transmitted throughout the whole uh, pulley system. It's not going to just wear out this idler. It, it's going to take a toll on everything downstream. Get some vibration going just because this can't hold its own. I, I hold this in the same category as Subaru uh, head gaskets. Just, just a real poor design. I made some phone calls and asked questions about the single bearing idler, but haven't got any any help from anybody yet. And I've got some other obligations coming up, some travel. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with this uh, for now. And if I can find out from someone that running this idler down here works okay, I think I'll try it. Another thing that would be nice is if I found a replacement pulley for this with the inside shoulder on it, like this pulley over here. That'd take care of it. It's a shame this one doesn't have the shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and torque these uh, four 
bolts. They take a 14 millimeter socket and I believe they're all 28.8 foot pounds. That's an amount that I'm comfortable torquing. Twenty eight point eight foot pounds, actually. Okay. So I've got these two bolts torqued, all of the idlers torqued the belt tensioner. I think I'm ready to put on the belt. The timing belt that came with my timing belt kit is a Mitsuboshi, Mitsuboshi, made in USA. I was glad to see that. And I believe this mark goes on the crankshaft mark and then these other two marks go on the camshaft marks. So we'll get this one lined up first. And I thought I'd use a clamp just to keep him where I want him. And uh, see if I can get this one. I believe the mark that I want is this punched mark right here on the camshaft sprocket. There's also a paint mark. There's also an arrow right here that points up that direction. And there's a red paint mark here. I think the one I want is this chiseled mark right here. And it's lined up with uh, an indent in the plastic housing. And that's lined up pretty well with the uh, vertical line where the head meets the block. So that's what I'm going with. I've seen these white paint marks and multiple places on this engine. Here, see some right there on this hose clamp. Dot of white paint right there. Dot of white paint, there's white paint right there. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about. Here's some white paint. Wish I knew more about that. It's hard to uh, fathom that it means anything uh, particular because it's on so many different the white paint is on so many different parts so I want to get this mark I believe lined up with that mark let's see here. push that up yeah there we go and I've got a little clamp here just to keep him where I want him I believe I'm doing this right. Never done it before. It's hard to say. It's probably going to get hard to work with now. Yeah, I knew it. Gosh. Maybe I'll take this off down here. That didn't do any good. Looks like I almost need to roll everything this direction. I've got to get this mark lined up with that case mark, uh, casting mark. Or it's a punch mark, actually. Tighten this up over here quite a bit. Of 
closer, but oh, there it is. There, that's what I wanted. This is another little clamp I found in the house. Let's see if I can make it work. Yeah. Yeah, it's got this belt mark lined up with this casing mark. How or uh, casting mark or punch mark. Get all the slack out of it I can. That's close. I need stronger thumbs. something to hold that down there now this of course is my camshaft sprocket holder thingamajig doohickey okay so we'll get the slack out of this belt see if I can get it on the sprocket now not even close well I'm at dangerous territory here real close to looking like someone that's never done this before that's a real poor image to put on YouTube <clears throat> well, maybe I need to pull the opposite direction on this one hold on okay I've got another genuine uh, sprocket torker thingamajig doohickey here to tighten the belt with so I'm tightening it between this pulley and this pulley taking all the slack out of here the belt tensioner is jammed up against the case and oh I, I got it it's going on all right I was in uh, danger of looking like a rogue amateur here like a person that's never worked on a Subaru before. But uh, I've been saved by specialized tools here. Okay. The belt's mostly on. With the exception of this pulley. And this is tight enough. I think that I can take some of this stuff off now and I still want all the slack I can get here so I'm gonna leave these in place and maybe give that a push while I'm trying to thread this in here this, this idler in here okay so this here obviously very technical looking apparatus is just a more advanced version of this one over here you see that it's actually suspended swinging on the rope so what I've got is tension on the belt it's real tight it's real tight the belt's got tension on it over the top giving me the most slack I can hope to get down here now I'll see if I can get this wobbly idler in place I can see the threads. I think this is going to be easy. Yeah.
Yeah. Look at there. Get a socket. Now I believe the belt's on where it needs to be. These, this mark, this mark still lined up. The crankshaft marks are still lined up. And the, uh, the other camshaft marks still lined up. So I believe I can release my specialized crankshaft holders now and the belt will be where it's supposed to be. I'll get a torque wrench on this guy. Doggy doggy. I looked in the Subaru manual and it says this is to be mounted over the timing belt with one millimeter of clearance. This hole is about the right fit. This one's an oversized hole so it's uh, pretty adjustable. So I came up with a a stack of paper about a millimeter thick. I'm going to use that for my spacing. If I understand correctly, this uh, bracket. I think in the manual it's called a belt guide is only on Subarus with manual transmissions and it's so that if the cars or the manual transmission is parked on the street in gear another car can't come along and bump it and skip the belt make the belt skip on the uh, cam sprocket. That can be bad news I guess on a interference motor when you've got the valves bouncing off the top of the piston. That should do it. So now my belt shouldn't be able to bounce up and skip a tooth. I think I'm ready to put my cover on here, so let's go ahead and do that. I got a new gasket for my timing belt cover and put it on. The old one grew. Apparently it was a uh, rubber that shouldn't have been used for this application because like from here to that hole this hole would be located clear over here it just um, deformed completely so I ordered this replacement gasket it just presses on and I didn't realize that you have to buy you have to order two separate gaskets this is an, a separate piece and I, I failed to order it, so I made do. It used to be about an inch and a half longer, and I just cut a section out right here. You can see how this hole, hole here is elongated. 
it shouldn't be that long so is this one so anyway I cut a section out it still fits on the groove here so I'm gonna use it I think it'll still seal dust back on there this should be pressed up against this this little ridge here and I think that'll hold it in place at least that's what I'm hoping if I can get it on there without coming off let's see I like that get one on the bottom where my jury rigging was done keep those rubber gaskets from falling out Notice there's one little hole here that's got a metal sleeve in it. So that one doesn't need the sleeved bolt. I believe it takes this little bolt. I didn't take this motor apart, so it's, this has all been a guessing game. in this a little bit so that others will go in place. I can see where that gasket's hanging too low here where it expanded where the old rubber expanded that'll probably give me problems and I'll regret not having more patience and ordering that second gasket my hands don't move this fast I just sped up the video edit. I work at a pace that enables me to learn and understand more about the machine, especially one that I haven't worked on before. I find that noisy power tools degrade the experience. I'm not a mechanic by trade. I just repair the stuff that I use. I enjoy it and gain insight to the vehicles and power tools that I repair. That helps me be a better operator of them. I'll bet a lot of these get replaced these plastic covers I would imagine they crack up pretty easy
Okay, now I'll torque them down. Say that goes in there like this. Yeah, about like that. Okie dokie. That's where I'll leave this video. The next one will be bolting on the external engine components. Catch you later.